COVID variant has surfaced in the UK, prompting travel bans and chaos. Has the West failed in its handling of the coronavirus? And China and the US join hands in a rescue mission in the Antarctic. Does this daring evacuation break the ice for cooperation closer to home? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. A new strain of COVID-19 surged to dominance among new infections in the UK and a second barrier just discovered in South Africa appears to be even more contagious. The British health minister said the new strain was out of control after the prime minister banned Christmas gatherings in many parts of England. British newspaper Metro even called it a jingle hell. So what has caused such mess and chaos. Has the West failed in its uh, handling of the coronavirus? Joining me today from London via Skype is Martin Jakes, visiting professor at Tsinghua University. Martin, it's great to have you on the show, especially on this very special evening. Um, tell us a bit about this uh, Christmas Eve. How special is it, uh, the things around you? Well, uh, this is probably the worst it's been since it was first uh, uh, began to develop in the UK uh, last March, followed by a lockdown. And we're now 10 months on, and we're in a lockdown which is more or less as severe as it was then. And uh, infection rates are shooting up, and no doubt over time the death, death toll will increase uh, proportionately. Um, so uh, I think, uh, I mean, th I think people are somewhat not only dispirited but forlorn about the situation because the reality is that we're no further, uh, we're no closer to eliminating the virus than we were 10 months ago. What do you attribute what is happening now to? I mean, when you have a new variant, sometimes it is not something that you can control. Um, and yet it seems that this is what prompted you to react very strongly and the reason why we have you on the show is also because you sent out very recently a volley of eight tweets very powerful content they have been reported uh, uh, at least here in china extensively for instance you talked about the year started with a major western assault on china over its handling of covid 19 china was on the defensive and 2020 is ending with china riding high and the west and the huge mess the most obvious obvious reason is that China handled COVID brilliantly and the West failed miserably. Uh, what prompted you to write these, these tweets? Well, just the reality of the situation because it's not just in the UK, it's right away across Europe. I mean, about the only country that's really done well, a Western country, and it has done well, is New Zealand. Germany was doing well, but it's not doing so well now. And if you look across the continent, Italy, Britain, Germany, France, the picture is bad, and in the United States, it's even worse. Over 300,000 uh, deaths, uh, over 3,000 dying every day. So the reality is that the West, you know, had time to prepare for this. It didn't start in the West until at least two months after it started in China. No serious preparations were made, and we've never been able to get on top of the situation. And the reason we haven't been able to get on top of the situation is we've never really been clear what the objective is. Whereas, for example, not just in China, but in East Asian countries, the, the, there was a clear objective, and that was to eliminate the virus. I don't think that has ever been true in, in the West, maybe ap apart from New Zealand. That's the one exception. But basically in the West, we've, we've yo-yoed, if you like, between different priorities. Is the priority life, or is it the economy? Is the priority individual liberty, or is it effective government intervention? And the result is that it's been a mess and a muddle, and that is the problem. And so there's no real strategy. We're always behind the game. We're always trying to catch up, and we're, of course, consistently failing. So what do you, what do you attribute this to uh, specifically? For instance, you, you talk about in your tweet that uh, it's a historic crisis of Western government, society and culture. What you just talked about, this yo-oing of, uh, of a lack of priorities, not knowing what to do, uh, running after your goals, exactly what 
are uh, on the level of the government, what are on the level of society, what are on the level of culture. I, I find it hard to believe that the government or the society or the culture do not want to save people, and yet it seems that uh, they are kind of uh, um, weighing in, be in between among different priorities. Is it a matter of intention? Is it a matter of incompetence? Is it a matter of just a, a failed system that needs improvement? Well, actually, I think it's basically all of those things. They're all mixed up into one thing, which is we can't get to grips with the pandemic. Now, you can say, well, you know, this is very rare. It's a first time occurrence in, across Europe or for a very, very long time, at least. Um, and so, you know, it, it's all it's all it's all new and different. But you know, th something like a pandemic has tested governments all over the world to the limit. I mean, the only equivalent I can think of really is war. And it's a, re it's a real test of a government and a society and a culture. Can you rise to the occasion and develop a strategy to deal with it, to have a very clear ob a priority of what the objective is, which has to be to save lives. The economy must come second, because until you're saving lives, then it's impossible to run the economy properly. And people are frightened. So that even if you want them to, you know, to engage in, in, in economic activity, they won't do it if they're frightened about the virus. So you have, it's very clear. But though there's been such muddled thinking, I mean, I think across Europe and certainly in America. I mean, in America, the priority with Trump was the economy. It was quite simple. He didn't, he, he didn't set any real store by saving life. Uh, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't care about it. It didn't matter to him. Now, in Europe, it's not been as extreme as that, but we've had the same kind of problems about sorting out what to do. And I would say this. First of all, uh, the governments, including certainly my own, I'm sorry to say, has been incompetent. It has always been behind the game. It's never had a clear priority. And, it's, and so its message to the people and what people hear is constantly confused. Um, secondly, uh, so, so what you need is a government with a strat a competent government with a clear strategy. Secondly, you need a society and a culture which recognizes the importance of individual responsibility, that we are part of a society, that social discipline and social responsibility is fundamental to solving this problem. And at the moment, that is not true in Western societies. I'm afraid the problem in Western societies, which is deep-seated, goes back historically in some ways a long time, but it's got worse, I think, over the last several decades, is a sort of selfish individualism. So people, you know, argue about, you know, whether they should wear face masks. I mean, you know, Stephen, now, 10 months later, if you go outside, m m most people are not wearing a face mask. Uh, and they don't, you know, well, it's my right not to wear a face mask uh, uh, and so on. And so, so the, in the culture, there's a lack of commitment to the kind of social discipline that's required. But precisely, now, precisely, that's what people uh, take pride in, you know, the kind of liberty, the kind of uh, um, uh, rise that, that they're born with that can't be taken away. And they kind of take it as their own responsibility to take care of themselves. So even if they get sick, they probably don't blame the government or they don't blame other people so much. Is that uh, what explaining some of the uh, research, the surveys that we are seeing. For instance, EU citizens last month uh, in, a, in a survey by Pew say that uh, more than half of adults in every EU member nation surveyed said their country had done a good job handling the COVID-19 pandemic, ranging between a low of 54% in Spain to a high of 95% in Denmark. So, uh, Martin, you say the, fa the West has uh, failed in handling the coronavirus, but it seems that a lot of Westerners seem uh, think they have done a good job. Yeah, well, this is a misperception. I mean, this is another problem. And the problem is ignorance, a lack of curiosity about the world. I mean, who are you measuring yourself against? Who are you trying to learn from? And the reality is that uh, 
the, the, le the level of ignorance about what's happening in East Asia, especially in China and so on, is enormous. I mean, you know, I was speaking to a friend yesterday who knows me well, knows my writing on China, and said, well, he said, it's, it's, it's the same all the world over. You know, everyone's having the, got the same problem. I said, this is not, just not true. Basically, they've eliminated it uh, in East Asia. Basically, they've eliminated it in China. So it's not the same the whole world over. So first of all, there's just ignorance. But and secondly, an unwillingness yeah. yeah. to learn. And the great yeah. problems in the West. It's, it's is, astonishing uh, that, that, you, is, yeah, that well-educated people are not aware of what's happening here, despite the fact that it's been talked in the, in, the, in the news. Is this why you talked about a, a mentality of uh, being proven, provincial? You said the West likes to think it is cosmopolitan. Wrong. It is increasingly provincial in its mentality. East Asian uh, societies have conquered COVID-19. We barely even acknowledge the fact. We desperately try to ignore that China has succeeded where we have catas uh, catastrophically failed. Help us understand this provincial mentality is unthinkable for many people. Well, this is absolutely true. The, you see, the thing is, the West, you know, as you know, run the world for 200 years always thinks it's the, the global leader, top dog, we know better than everyone else, and so on. And, of course, there was a whole era when that was true, but it's not true anymore because we, the world has been, transport, has been transforming itself dramatically with the rise of East Asia, other developing countries coming up, and so on. So it, the, West is, the way the West thinks is now obs, ob, ob, well, obsolescent, and even in some ways actually obsolete, because the way it sees the world is not as the world is anymore. And so you've got this kind of delusions of grandeur still in the West, where they think that the only thing that matters is what happens in the West. It's not just confined to the pandemic. This is across the board kind of thinking. And, and so the West was once cosmopolitan. You know, it sort of, it, you know, it traveled, uh, it, you know, it colonized. Uh, uh, it, uh, its language spread around the world, its currency spread around the world, and so on. It had a very cosmopolitan view of itself. And it looked down to the rest, on the rest of the world, which it proceeded to colonize on the rest of it, as provincial. And now, actually, it's flipped. And the opposite is now happening, which mm. is that, you know, if you go to the Chinese, the Japanese, the Koreans, the Malaysians, and so on, East Asia, they know a lot more about the West than the West knows about them. And the West isn't interested in them because they don't think they matter. Well, hey, I mean, this was re is really backward and regressive thinking. So what, what to do next? What to do? Because this is a big question. The West, you say, at least failed on uh, handling the coronavirus. Uh, what about in other things? Does it mean that the Western system is in a real problem? What has to be done in order uh, for the Western society, for the developed society to be, to continue to be stable and prosperous and for the world to continue to have peace and share development? Oh, well, that's a very big question. I mean, I know. I, I, one, thing, one thing I'd like to emphasize is that the pandemic is a very crucial moment. I mean, not only is it very serious, it's affected the whole world. Um, it, it's about life and so on. But also it's about governance. It's a test of governance. Now, hitherto, we haven't had a great key pivotal moment like this. You know, we've had China's rise, which has been an economic phenomenon, done extremely well, West doing worse and so on. But this is, this is a different test. This is a test of governance. And the West is failing. And East Asia, and especially China, is succeeding. So I regard this to be, well, I've called it the, the, great, the moment of great transition. This is the moment, in my view, where a l large numbers of people across the world, particularly the developing world, but not only necessarily in the developing world, mm -hmm. will come to look to China as the global leader. That is an extraordinary moment. Um, well, 
We have to leave it there, Martin. Indeed, a very big topic, and a lot of people are debating this, whether China is you know, interested in becoming a leader, whether China is capable of becoming a leader, and whether China wants to be a leader, or it's just, it's just want to clean its house, you know, build, feed its people, and stand in peace. So, but that is a completely different discussion, but definitely I think there is a lot of mutual learning that has to be done, not just one way from the East to the West. Um, many thanks to Martin Jakes, Jakes for this very interesting discussion, very important one as well. And Merry Christmas, Martin.